very happy morning and a happy monday my dear students i'm so glad that i meet you again in another new uh, online recorded class i hope you all have uh, done your first matric exam nicely and uh, submitted the papers in school and in today's class i have planned to uh, revise uh, lesson 1 nutrition in plants well uh, so to start with uh, the question what is nutrition by this time you should be knowing the intake or uptake of uh, nutrients by plants or animals is actually known as nutrition before learning about nutrition uh, what we have discussed in lesson 2 that is uh, there are different types of nutrients which can be classified or categorized into macronutrient and micronutrient uh, macronutrient which includes the nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium magnesium etc and the micronutrients which include zinc magnesium uh, iron etc so why they are called as macro and micronutrients because uh, macronutrients they are needed in more amount per day several uh, grams or several uh, several grams per day whereas micronutrients they are needed only in a very minute or trace amount let me say in my uh, they are needed uh, in micrograms or milligrams that is what i call it as trace amount A small amount is sufficient per day and that's why they are known as micronutrients and the other one known as macronutrients uh, now coming to this uh, a uh, nutrients again so that is one part macronutrient and micronutrient uh, the other part is uh, where the nutrients or in other words the composition of food can be categorized into different types as as we have learned before carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins minerals and a roughage so these are the various uh, nutrients or uh, i could say these are the various composition or ingredients of a food and uh, related to this you might have learned before that uh, we have to maintain as humans we have to maintain our balanced diet and a mixed diet what is mixed diet if you have all the nutrients in your diet per session okay so when you are eating a meal or a dinner or a lunch whatever so if it has all the nutrients whatever i said just now that is carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins minerals and roughage then that is known as uh, mixed diet when it is in the right proportion then it then i mean when you have all this uh, nutrients in the right proportion in the proper ratio uh, then it is known as a uh, balanced diet that is uh, you need a particular ratio of carbohydrates a particular ratio of protein a particular ratio of vitamins that is very minute amount of vitamins is sufficient each day a minute amount of minerals and uh, roughage so if it is in the right proportion that is actually known as balanced diet nutrition in plants uh, actually um, when you look into plants uh, usually we say it is uh, autotrophic in nature uh, we may think all the plants are green in nature or uh, we may think all the plants are uh, photosynthetic it is not so actually uh, there are some plants which are autotrophic in nature and there are some plants which are heterotrophic in nature uh, again you have learned uh, you have finished uh, completing first grade of test you might have learned uh, many concepts related to this uh, i'm just revising okay. so autotrophic what is autotrophic nutrition uh, when a living organism especially we are talking about plants okay so when a living organism is able to produce its own food that is known as autotrophic auto means self self protection okay so if it is able to produce its own food Uh, with the help of certain resources or sources or raw materials that is actually known as uh, autotrophic nutrition heterotrophic nutrition uh, if an organism cannot produce its own food it depends on other sources many different sources many different ways and that's why it is known as heterotrophic nutrition hetero means different so it is not one way it is uh, many ways or it is not a one food it is of different types of food or different types of prey or different types of uh, sources okay so that is the difference between autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition again i repeat if it produces its own food it is known as autotrophic nutrition 
if it cannot produce its own food it depends on other sources or other animals or other living organisms then uh, that is known as heterotrophic nutrition uh, green plants are examples of autotrophic nutrition whereas uh, all other uh, organisms except green plants are examples of heterotrophic nutrition so with related to this uh, plants uh, we have certain plants which uh, have a chlorophyll pigment and which undergo photosynthesis and those uh, are categorized as autotrophic nutrition whereas there are certain plants actually in this lesson we are not dealing with animals so i am sticking on to the plants so there are certain plants uh, which depend uh, on other sources that is they cannot prepare their own food so they depend on other sources and the reason is because of the lack of chlorophyll pigment so since there is no chlorophyll pigment in those plants uh, they cannot do photosynthesis using sunlight water carbon dioxide etc and so they uh, come under heterotrophic nutrition we'll study that uh, later about heterotrophic because we are going to study about the uh, parasites saprophytes etc okay uh, with related to autotrophic nutrition uh, the plants i mean i said green plants they are called as green plants because they have chlorophyll pigment and these green plants uh, they undergo photosynthesis as we discussed before okay right so uh, for this photosynthesis certain factors are needed essential okay uh, very much needed uh, uh, in the sense uh, if any one factor is missing the photosynthesis will not take place that is uh, the factors like a uh, uh, chlorophyll pigment sunlight uh, water carbon dioxide uh, these are the various factors that are needed for photosynthesis again i repeat chlorophyll pigment sunlight water carbon dioxide so if these uh, new, uh, uh, sources or if these uh, factors are not available any one factor for example if uh, chlorophyll is absent so the question is will that be a plant without chlorophyll yes there may not be a plant without chlorophyll but there are uh, plants uh, or leaves in a plant which lack chlorophyll you might have seen in some plants uh, uh, where the greenish color will be lost the leaf will be yellowish in color okay all other leaves will be green the certain leaves will be greenish in color and that will be because of uh, chlorosis what is chlorosis loss of chlorophyll is known as chlorosis okay it might be due to some chemical reaction taking place in the leaf or it might be due to some infection caused by some germs okay microorganisms okay with that your virus or fungus okay so this chlorosis leads to loss of chlorophyll and that condition is known as chlorosis and because of that uh, when there is lack of chlorophyll automatically the leaf the particular leaf or a group of leaves uh, it does not do photosynthesis it cannot do photosynthesis okay right so in that case uh, where you come across uh, absence of photosynthesis so i'm just giving an example uh, uh, where a factor chlorophyll is uh, needed for photosynthesis in that way we have sunlight we have water and other factors okay so which means if uh, there is no water there is no photosynthesis if there is no sunlight there is no photosynthesis so all these factors are important okay so again i repeat which includes chlorophyll pigment which is found on the in the leaves that is actually uh, you might have learned in lower classes chloroplast if you have not learned let me uh, tell you uh, we have this uh, special uh, organelles called as plastids in plants we have a special organelles called as plastids which is not found in animals so which includes chloroplast chromoplast leucoplast what is chloroplast the plastids which produces uh, uh, a green coloration or known as chloroplast the chloro the i mean the plastids which produce uh, uh, which does not produce colors are known as leucoplast and the plastids which uh, produce various other different colors uh, like orange yellow etc are known as chromoplast Chlor chloroplast chromoplast and leucoplast so chloroplast uh, which produces chlorophyll pigment which gives the green coloration to the plants then a leucoplast which does not gives any color because it does not produce any pigments coloring pigments and uh, uh, this is regarded with uh, roots where the roots will be whitish in color inside and that is because of leucoplast and finally uh, chromoplast where in case of fruits uh, and flowers you come across various different colors and that is because of the presence of various different pigments produced by chromo chromoplast chromoplast uh, uh, which includes uh, xanthophyll fucoxanthin etc there are many pigments that are produced by chromoplast okay right so coming to the point chlorophyll pigment a greenish color pigment produced by chlorophyll okay uh, then next is uh, our sunlight 
it need not to be a natural uh, source of light that is sunlight it may be also the other artificial uh, sources of light like tube light uh, cfl bulb or led bulbs etc so basically light that is the second uh, factor that is necessary for photosynthesis and this light actually enhances the whole reaction it stimulates the whole reaction such that the photosynthesis takes place okay right and the third one is the third factor is important factor carbon dioxide co2 as we discussed in the live class uh, carbon dioxide where this carbon in the carbon dioxide is actually converted into starch so i i i i, I I think you remember I wrote in the live class certain sections C6H12O6 that is glucose. Uh, glucose is the ultimate uh, product of uh, photosynthesis. So the C6H12O6 where the C6 that is six carbons are obtained from the carbon of carbon dioxide. This is why plants depend on carbon dioxide. And this uh, remaining H12O6 is obtained from water. So that yeah, makes the significance for water and carbon dioxide. And one more thing we discussed in live classes in, in those two sections, that is uh, the factor that uh, <coughs> the factor that uh, uh, we have two uh, uh, photosynthesis, light reaction and a dark reaction. In light reaction, uh, where the uh, plant takes the carbon dioxide and releases oxygen, whereas uh, during a night time we call it as dark reaction, uh, where the same plant uh, takes oxygen and releases carbon dioxide. So the question is whether plants are aerobic or anaerobic. The organisms which depend on oxygen are known as aerobic and those which do not depend on oxygen or which need not oxygen, they don't need oxygen and those are known as uh, anaerobic organisms. In that way, uh, plants are aerobic even though they depend on carbon dioxide in the daytime, they are aerobic uh, but they are not anaerobic. Okay, uh, They are depending on uh, carbon dioxide just for that carbon which is uh, uh, utilized or uh, converted into glucose that C6 okay so again I repeat C6 H12O6 okay uh, uh, else uh, plants are aerobic in nature they need only oxygen for their survival okay so you can test this uh, by uh, just covering the whole plant tightly such that after some time uh, what happens all the oxygen when all the oxygens are utilized the plant starts to die which means plants depend on oxygen at the same time uh, it doesn't need, uh, doesn't uh, mean that uh, they don't need carbon dioxide. So they they need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. At the same time, they need oxygen for living, or respiration, or breathing. Okay, right. So in that way, we have we need. I mean, uh, in that way, uh, plants need uh, chlorophyll pigment. They need sunlight. They need uh, water, and uh, they need carbon dioxide. Uh, the chemical rea equation of this uh, photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water gives glucose plus oxygen so when carbon dioxide and water goes inside the plant they are converted into glucose and uh, oxygen that oxygen will be sent in the data and with regard to breathing uh, breathing is uh, different from respiration to learn in higher classes uh, breathing uh, where uh, it's takes place through leaves uh, there are numerous uh, minute uh, microscopic holes found in the leaves and uh, through these leaves uh, breathing takes place like how we have nostrils in our ears uh, in uh, uh, plants we have leaves and in the leaves we have uh, minute holes named as stomata and through this stomata the breathing takes place and goes inside and comes out so that is one important significance of breathing and uh, when I say stomata I hope you all learned the last year about stomata that not only breathing, even transpiration takes place through uh, stomata. Uh, stom transpiration, which is none other than the loss of excess water in the form of water vapor. That is actually known as transpiration. And uh, both the takes place through stomata, that is breathing as well as transpiration. So these are the various factors and various uh, uh, importance that goes to these factors related to photosynthesis, that is chlorophyll. Then sunlight, the third is water, and the fourth one is carbon dioxide. Okay. Uh, now let us learn uh, about heterotrophic nutrition. So one, we have learned about autotrophic, and second one is heterotrophic nutrition. In plants, it is amazing to know that uh, plants are autotrophic in nature. From lower classes, we have learned that plants are uh, autotrophic in nature. They are they undergo photosynthesis. Uh, but now uh, in this
is uh, less than the airline, their plans are like profitability. That is, uh, they are, they, uh, there are certain plants which are non green, that is, they don't have chlorophyll pigment, and due to that reason, they depend on some other organism for food. Uh, so we have two types of heterotrophic nutrition, one is saprophyte and another is parasite. Saprophytes uh, which uh, depend on dead and decaying animals, dead and decaying uh, organic matter, uh, whereas parasites which depend on living on us, another living on us of uh, For example, we have certain uh, plants like cascata, uh, which are parasitic in nature, they suck the nutrient of other plants. So cascata is a good example of uh, parasitic plants. Apart from that, we have this uh, Rafflesia, you might have learned in lower classes, uh, which, is a, which is an example of largest plant. So this Rafflesia is also a parasitic plant, which is sucks the nutrient from other uh, plants. With regard to saprophytes, we have numerous uh, microorganisms like bacteria and fungi, which are saprophytic in nature. In nature. For example, uh, uh, example is a mushroom. Uh, which is a fungus, which is the largest fungus and it is a saprophyte, that is, which uh, degrades, uh, decomposes dead matter and from those they obtain the nutrients. Uh, when I say this uh, mushroom, uh, I hope you know we uh, consume mushroom, uh, but all mushrooms are not uh, good for our health. Okay, there are many poisonous mushrooms which, uh, will be, which will be of pure white color or sometimes which will be colorful which attracts but still they are dangerous to other. Okay, then uh, next is symbionts. So, so this is something that you are learning new this year. Uh, that is symbionts. Uh, when you come across a relationship between two different organisms, uh, we, we call this as mutual uh, relationship, then it is known as symbionts. That is, uh, one providing something and other in turn providing another. That is actually known as mutual understanding. Even with you people, uh, you will you will have this kind of relationship. There are some uh, students who during interval they readily give what they have as snacks, and there are some who never gives anything at all. And there are some students who provides only to those who shares their snacks. If you give your snack, I will give some of mine. So this kind of this third this last type of relationship is actually known as mutual relationship, equal. Okay. So I provide you something, in turn you provide me something. That is known as mutual. In that way, we have this lichens, which is an association between algae and fungi. So algae is a plant, is a photosynthetic plant which contains chlorophyll, and so it uh, produces uh, uh, stars, and that is shared with the fungus. In turn, the fungus uh, it uh, uh, it, uh, de it uh, absorbs the nutrients. It uh, decomposes and that nutrients will be given to the algae. So in that way, they have a symbiotic relationship and uh, you call this uh, relationship as symbionts, symbiotic relationship. And the organism together, even though you have algae and fungi together, they are known as lichens. Okay. Then the last uh, type of uh, plant is insectivorous plants. So we have different types of insectivorous plants like Venus spider, uh, pitcher plant, Nepenthes, Epiglia, uh, Drosida, etc. So each and everyone have their own method to consume an insect and that way they get their nutrition. Actually, even though insectivorous plants depend on insects, even though they may be called as heterotrophic, but they are not actually heterotrophic because uh, these are plants which have chlorophyll pigment, they will be greenish in color and they undergo photosynthesis. The only issue is they lack nitrogen. These plants are found in the soil where there is lack of nitrogen. Nitrogen is an important macronutrient. So, uh, usually uh, all the nutrients uh, important is NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. N for nitrogen, P for phosphorus and K for potassium. So, these three nutrients are very, very important. Among these three, the important is nitrogen. Uh, the importance in the sense, uh, I think I can give one example that is, uh, uh, it is a part of DNA. It is important because it is found in uh, DNA. It is a part of the DNA, apart from car carbon, hydrogen. Nitrogen is also found in DNA and that makes the uh, significance of nitrogen as a nutrient. Okay. Uh, and also, this nitrogen, uh, since it is lagging in the soil of those uh, plants, uh, these plants, they try to uh, depend on some other way, that is, they become an insectivorous. That is, they feed on insect. Actually, 
They not only feed on insects, they also feed on mice or rat or frog, whatever that comes in. Okay. So, like that way, these uh, uh, plants are known as insectivorous plants. They obtain nitrogen from that uh, animal and uh, based, on, based on that uh, nutrient, they produce starch. That is the endergo of photosynthesis. That is the specialty of uh, insectivorous plants. Okay. So, that's your... Uh, so that's your lesson one, uh, very simple. Uh, just uh, observe the concept that is formed inside, observe the examples that is inside, and uh, it becomes easy for you to memorize and recall the questions. Okay. Your assignment is uh, you just uh, copy down the following questions that is displayed in the screen and uh, write in your notebook neatly with the today's it. That will be your assignment. So I'm not going to be, uh, since already it has been taught and advised by Mr. Jerome. I didn't went more deep into this concept, so with this I'll finish today's session. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, attend the online and test uh, perfectly. Okay, all the best.